AMD's 9800X3D is undoubtedly the king of gaming CPUs. If you're gonna get this new CPU, you are most likely gonna need a new CPU cooler to keep this CPU cool. I have tested a few coolers, including one of AMD's stock coolers, and hopefully, I can provide you with some help with getting the right CPU cooler for your 9800X3D. I am not an expert when it comes to CPU cooling, and I don't have that many coolers to show you, and as we are moving to another location, apologies if the video looks a bit plain and a bit messy because most of my stuff has already gone to the new location. There is no stock cooler packaged with the 9800X3D, so it's a clear sign that AMD wants you to get your own cooler. But let's throw one in anyway. So this is the AMD Wave Preserve. And on the right, we have the aftermarket coolers. Starting off with an air cooler, this is ID Cooling's A620 Pro SE. For the AIOs, we have the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. And the 360mm's, we have the Cooler Master Atmos 360 and the Tri-X Panorama 360 ARGB. And as for the test setup, it was kind of complicated. I start out first with this Gigabyte X870E Aeros Pro Ice with this pair of 32GB of King Bang DDR5 RAM. But because of some issues, I had to change to the ASUS X670E-F and the 32GB of GSQ RAM. I am not sure if it's because of the motherboard, the RAM, or because I have an SSD with conflicting chipsets. But that is a video for another time. There should be not much of a performance difference between the two sets of RAM especially. Apologize also for this confusion. I'm also not a pro at overclocking, so I ran a 9800X3D at stock settings, and I only enabled XMP for the King Bang RAM and Expo for the GSQ RAM. Both the CPU fans and pumps ran at their standard fan curves where applicable. Yes, I know the 9800X3D is a top of the line CPU, but it also does pretty decent in creation. So let's first begin with what creators care for. Blender. The Ray Prism tried to put up a good fight, but it was way hotter than the other coolers. It averaged 90 degrees C with a max of 95.3, with deltas almost 70 degrees C. And let's bring in our first aftermarket cooler, the ID Cooling A620 Pro SE. This cooler fared way better, cooling a 9800X3D 10 degrees lower than the Ray Prism, and even kept the max below 90. We also see the same situation with Cinebench 2024. The Wraith Prism burned the hell up when pushed by Cinebench 2024, while ID Cooling's A620 also gave the same temperatures as Blender with 82 to 85 degrees C. Both air coolers did put up a good fight, but you can see that the Wraith Prism, though still kind of operated within the TJ Maxx, is definitely not enough to cool the 9800X3D. So how about the water coolers? I'm very lucky to have one of the last top gen AIOs to show you how it runs on the 9800X3D. It may not be the Liquid Freezer 3 or even 360mm AIO, but I think this Liquid Freezer 2 240 should do the trick. Well, it sort of did the trick. It cooled 2 degrees better than the A620 Pro, though it almost has a similar max as the A620. This Liquid Freezer 2 240 also cooled the 9800X3D similar in 2024, keeping the 9800X3D within the 80s range on average. I also have a DK240 DRGB on hand, but that one is kind of old, so I did not include it in this list. However, if you want to know how it runs, you can let me know in the comments. Okay, let's move on to the 360mm AIOs. First up, we have Cooler Masters Atmos 360 one of the newest current-gen AIOs from Cooler Master. The Atmos 360 cooled 9900X3D a lot better here, 6 degrees lower than the Liquid Freezer 2 and more than 10 degrees lower than the A620 Pro air cooler. It also managed to keep the max temps at 80 degrees C. The Atmos 360 also performed surprisingly better in Cinebench 2024. It has a similar average to Blender, the early 70s, but it also managed to limit the temps to 75-ish degrees C. Pretty impressive, I must say. Okay, and for the next 360 is the Tri-X Panorama 360 ARGB. How does this awesome curved screen AIO perform? Well, it's similar to the Atmos 360. It's 1 or 2 degrees C hotter than the Atmos 360 on average and max for both Blender and Cinebench 2024. But needless to say, both 360mm AIOs cooled the 9800X3D pretty well compared to the other coolers. I've also included a chart for the power usage. If you are interested, you can pause and take a look at the chart. That said, most of you will get this CPU for gaming, right? So how much does cooling affect the gaming performance? So I ran Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p together with an RTX 4080. I know this may not be the best representation of gaming cooling, but here goes. Not surprising, the 9800X3D was at its hottest when cooled by the Rave Prism stock cooler. You can see that the CPU and GPU usage was pretty balanced at the start of the benchmark, 
But as we proceed outdoors, there's a sudden increment or spike in the CPU usage, which results in higher temps from 73 degrees C and 100 watts of usage to 81 degrees C and 113 watts of usage. That said, I was surprised at the improvement when you move from that stock cooler to the A620 Pro SE. It's a 9 to 10 degrees C drop within the two air coolers, even with a higher CPU usage in the latter half of the benchmark. Going on to the liquid freezer too, there's a further 5 degrees C reduction in temperatures. The 240mm AIO also managed to keep the 9800X 3D below 70 degrees C even with the usage spike, and also kept it within the 100 watts range to reduce the power usage. Now let's go on to the 360mm AIOs. This is where things look a lot more interesting. Starting with the MOS 360, we see a steady temperature range of 56 to 57 degrees C, with a power usage of less than 90 watts. Even as we go on to the CPU usage spike outdoors, the MOS 360 kept the 9800X 3D at 60 degrees C, with a max power usage of 94 watts. Tri-Axis Panorama 360 also delivered similar performance as the MOS 360, though it was 1 or 2 degrees C higher, but it still kept 9800X 3D in the early 60 degrees C range and 95 watt range. Very impressive cooling from both 360mm AIOs, but of course there's a big caveat, which is the price. To start off with the Rave Prism, while it does not perform as well as the other coolers, if you're really desperate for a CPU cooler, you can still use this if you have one lying around from your previous Ryzen 7000 non-X and AM4 CPUs. If you ever want to buy it, I found one at SGD $59, though I think you are better off saving this money and spending it on a better CPU cooler. So talking about the better CPU coolers, the first one on the list is ID Cooling's A620 Pro SE. It is not a very expensive CPU cooler. Going at $55 Singapore dollars, it is one of the more affordable CPU coolers on this list and it cools the 9800X 3D pretty okay if you are just gaming because the temperatures in gaming look pretty okay but you can see that there's a big reduction in cooling performance when you include creation. Next up for the Liquid Freezer 2, it's like last gen so it may be kind of hard to get this CPU cooler but I did find one for 119 Singapore dollars. You could consider this cooler but it only cools slightly better than the A620 so I think you could top up another 10 bucks for the current gen Liquid Freezer 3 240 or even better the Liquid Freezer 3 360 at 169 Singapore dollars. And talking about 360mm AIOs, there's like a nice bigger price jump going for 240 to a 360. Like for example, the MOS 360 costs Singapore 239 while the 240 variant only costs 189 Singapore dollars. But the cooling power of a 360mm AIO as you have seen is greater especially on this new gen of CPUs. While Ryzen 9000 on stock does not run as hot as Ryzen 7000, it still does benefit greatly from a 360mm AIO. And we have this Tri-X Panorama 360 ARGB. Not gonna lie, it has very good cooling performance, even on overclocked CPUs. But it is very expensive. It costs a whopping 527 Singapore dollars. But obviously, you are paying for the superior performance, the nice looks, and of course, this very cool, very awesome curved AMOLED screen. Okay, just a quick update. The Gigabyte board did work better after I used another SSD with just the AMD drivers. But I have not retested the set of KingBank RAM with this board. It may be many issues, but anyway, I think it's a lot safer to have separate SSDs if you have Intel and AMD drivers. They don't play well with each other. If you plan to use just one SSD with both platform drivers on the same board. Okay, so which cooler should you go for? Well, as usual, it depends on what you use this PC for. If you use this 9800X 3D for gaming, which I think the majority does, you can choose between the air cooler, A620 Pro SE or a 240mm AIO. Skip the Liquid Freezer 2. Just go straight for the Liquid Freezer 3 240 or even a 360 if you want that extra headroom for both gaming and creation. Cooler Masters Atmore 360 is also a great 360mm option. It looks good with that rainbow center and also provides a pretty decent cooling performance. Well, that's it. If you want a more blink like an LCD screen, you could check out the Ion 360 also from Cooler Master. Or there is always this king, the Tri-X Panorama 360. I don't know how the Tri-X managed to combine superior cooling performance on this 9800X 3D with this giant curved screen. It is just a cooler on a leak of its own. But of course, the drawback is its price. And I feel that there's just too many wires and connections. Hopefully, Tri-X will release a newer model with less wires and connections. 
Okay, so I hope this test can give you an insight into what cooler to pick for the 9800X 3D. AMD stock cooler obviously isn't enough, so you have to invest in a better cooler for the 9800X 3D to give you the best results. I have no means an expert in temperature testing or overclocking. Do write down in the comments if you have any advice on how I can improve the tests, the benchmarks, or what we'd like to know in such future tests. But like if you like this video, and watch my reviews of the Tri-X and Cooler Master AIOs. So, catch you in the next video.